Good day and welcome to Westchester Talk Radio. I'm John Marino. Our Cup of Political Joe show, we are joined by the mayor of the village of Rybrook, Paul Rosenberg, and we are brought to you by, here at Westchester Talk Radio, a variety of our good friends around the region, like NTG, the Indian Point Energy Center in Buchanan. At the Indian Point Energy Center in Buchanan, NTG promise us, they promise us to keep us powered right through April of 2021, and they promise to keep supporting our communities right throughout. You, me, and everybody around Westchester, we thank NTG, the Indian Point Energy Center, for their support here at Westchester Talk Radio, and we thank our good friends at Lapolis Electric, where you are never left in the dark, and check out their podcast series, Live Wire, produced by Shark Creative, find it on demand. Lipolislectric.com. It runs on Westchester Talk Radio.com and can also be found on demand on our Westchester Talk Radio podcast page. Also brought to you, we thank our good friends at Mark Sterling Realty, too. Mayor Rosenberg, Paul Rosenberg from the Village of Rybrook here on Cup of Political Joe, Westchester Talk Radio. Great to have you with us here on Westchester Talk Radio. How hard has the COVID-19 pandemic hurt your village? Thank you, John, for inviting me. First of all, always a pleasure to be here. It's hurt us. Um, you know, we have uh, quite a few people infected here in the village, uh, 170 at last count, but that's not counting the people who have not been tested that are asymptomatic and walking around uh, spreading the germs potentially. You know, we- So 170 out of a total population of about 10,000? About 10,000, correct. Mm -hmm. So that's a pretty decent number overall. It's pretty decent. And when you think about, you know, that's the confirmed number. And like I was mentioning, if you have uh, people who are asymptomatic and walking around and don't know that they are spreading the germs, probably figuring at least another 170, maybe another 200. So Yeah, I was going to get to that. How do we know how many are asymptomatic and that have it and don't show any symptoms? You, you Is there a formula to that, but you bring out a good point. It's probably double than what we do. It's probably do. double, and, and that's um, maybe being, uh, you know, a little bit on the low side. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, I know that there are some mayors in Westchester, they take their confirmed number, number excuse me, and triple it. But and um, triple it. yeah, yeah. But but what I'm gonna I'm conservatively saying you know it's probably about double. We have pretty good uh, uh, compliance here from people in terms of the social distancing. But that being said, we had a little bit of a spike last week, so um, it went from about 143 to 170 um, within a day or two. And um, you know, are you people would... not distancing the way they should around the village? Well, John, Maybe. you know. I th- I think the problem is, is that people are getting the, antsy. Le- the antsy, letting their guard right. down. Um, you know, I see people walking around on the street. They're, they're trying to social distance, maybe not as far apart as they had. We, we did a pretty good job when this first started within the first two weeks. We put up signs on every single light post. We had a thousand of these printed. And, you know, it reminds people to social distance. They're waterproof. They're plastic signs. We had that done. Uh, right at the beginning, and I send out massive voicemails, I send out blast emails, we try to do our best, but to your point, people are starting to get antsy, we're, you know, towards the end of week eight, and um, I know a lot of people, uh, myself included, would like this to be over. You know, you put up a sign like you showed us here a moment ago, and you look at that sign, and if I'm in Rye Brook, and I see that posted on a fence, You'd have to wonder, what part of the memo am I not getting if I don't social distance or if I violate anything posted on that sign? It's, it's disappointing, right? You, you see, people, maybe they saw it the first few days. They, they said, oh, you know, I, I got lots of emails when we first put these signs up. Great job. Appreciate, you know, you're doing this and being proactive. It starts to blend in with the landscape after a while. And... You know, I start to see birthday parties happening, uh, you you know, where all of a sudden you'll see, you know, five or seven cars in front of somebody's house. Um, That's not promoting social distancing. Uh, You know, we see people who are anxious to get back out on the tennis court. I get it. I I understand. I used to be a tennis player and I know what it's like. If you're a tennis player, you you see a beautiful day 
and you want to go out on the tennis court. And, and we haven't been permitting that. I think we may be changing our attitude towards that in the next uh, week or so. We're getting some new guidance from the state and from the county on that. Uh, basketball courts, I get emails very regularly. Why can't you open up the basketball court? Well, I think the governor actually said it best when someone asked him about playing basketball. If you're playing basketball correctly, there's no way you can social distance. You're on top no. of each other. Unless it's just a dad and, and a son or daughter playing a nice game of horse, which is, is certainly uh, great, but we can't plan for that. We have to plan for people having a regular pickup game, and, and that's what we're trying to prevent at this point in time. You know, I had to explain to a good friend a couple of days ago, who I know is getting antsy, sit tight. We should be used to doing this by now after about eight weeks. So, And for some, it turned out to be fun. I never thought I'd enjoy maybe sitting you know, around the house here and figuring out, I've got to do this and I've got to do that, and maybe this might work and this might work, that might not work. But you know what? If you take the time to figure it out, you try to put it all together as best as possible, obviously, and you find out you can make it work if you're willing to sit tight. And for eight weeks, I think most people have made it work sitting tight. They have to. And, you know, I, I told my staff, I said, listen, um, and this is my staff, uh, as you're probably aware, I'm not sure if your listeners are, um, you know, Rybrook, we have normal elections and everything, but this is not my paying for job. That's not what uh, puts food on the table. And, and I do have a, a normal uh, day job. And, right, uh, as for many and most village mayors around West exactly, Coast, the mayor exactly. of the city, like in New Rochelle or Yonkers, Correct. you have to do something for a living. That's right. And, you know, when I was on the phone with my staff on Friday and I, I said to them, because our company has extended work from home uh, longer, um, throughout the summer. And, and what uh, do you do by day also? I, I uh, am run the IT audit department for uh, a bank. Ah, and okay. uh, so we audit. You've uh, got a lot of responsibility. Yeah, you we audit the banks. And you run a bank's IT department. Well, the IT, I, we audit the bank's IT department. I run we the audit department. Yeah. You're still involved with the operation of the IT yes. department. Yes. And what I told my staff the other day, and I, and I have some staff down in the Atlanta area and uh, also around the world, I said, listen, you can't, if, I understand everybody's getting antsy, create a routine, you know, and, and get up, get out of the house, go for a walk around the block because, you know, you don't want to go, end up going stir crazy. And, um, you know, the, you, you need to have some sort of a way to uh, divert your attention from, you don't want to be working all the time. And uh, when you're working from home for an extended period like this, it becomes second nature where maybe you'll walk by your computer and start checking on your email over the weekend. Well, you know what? Uh, we don't have a patient dying on the table in our profession. So it's okay if you don't check your email, get outside, spend time with your family. Um, and, and that's, really the best way to kind of uh, pass the time. Uh, and, yeah, I and, find myself yeah. sitting here much longer than I say I'm going to <clears throat> many times, and you do get yep. into a routine doing this, and I found out being around here a lot more often than I had been for probably 40 years. You know, and you look around the house and you say, gee, I forgot about that. Like this room here where I operate from, this home studio here, got converted after I looked at it and somebody suggested it to me. I said, yeah, I didn't think of that. That room still exists. And here it is. That? Here we are. That's simple. And, so, and I've taken over my dining room. So uh, dining I'm, I'm room. literally sitting at my dining room table and, uh -huh. uh, you know, I'm in the middle of my house and it's very And easy. your wife says to that, you have to cook dinner, right? Frequently. <laughs> yeah. Okay. There you go. <laughs> had to be a trade-off there somewhere, right? By yes. the way, for Mother's Day for your wife, happy Mother's Day. Thank you. you. Thank you. All throughout Thank the you. Rosenberg family and to yes. all the moms in Rybrook and around the Westchester. Now, you deal with budgets. You audit a bank's IT department. You operate a budget as the mayor. You run the budget, the head honcho of the budget in the village of Rybrook. How much has this pandemic made an impact on your budget in the village? Well, John, that's a great question. And, and in what it's done uh, in a nutshell is it's devastated us. And I'll tell you why. The number one reason is that we have two very large hotels in Rybrook. We have the Doral Arrowwood, which has been closed now for several months due to, to uh, financial issues within the hotel. And um, we also have the Westchester Hilton. It used to be called the Rytown Hilton. 
Right. Where for many years, we would go every year for the Westchester, the weekly Westchester Student Athlete of the Week Award, sponsored by and hosted by Con Edison, too. And did that for 25, almost 30 years. And it's got the biggest ballroom in all of Westchester County. Right. A it's huge a great ballroom. Place. Huge ballroom. I know that a lot of the, uh, the, the parties, the Republican Party, the Democratic Party, they've all used it. On, they all use it on a regular basis, or they have, uh, to, for either party conventions or, or election nights or whatnot. And the Hilton uh, and the Westchester, uh, the Westchester Hilton and the Doral Arrowwood contribute about between seven hundred and eight hundred thousand dollars a year in uh, hotel taxes to the wow. village. That's a lot of money. How you do know? you do without that? How do you do without that now? Just the prorated portion you're missing for just well, a couple of months. Forget, how are we going to do uh, without that going forward? Because right. there, there is a good chance that the Hilton may not open due to what's going on now with COVID. There, you know, beautifully we, rebuilt bar area there, lounge it's area. Beautiful. The entrance is it's maybe gorgeous. the best I've ever seen in a hotel anywhere. It's gorgeous. Way that and, rebuilt. Yeah. It's and, like a city being in there. How can you do without is, that? Rydebrook is known for that hotel. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And if that hotel does not reopen, we have we will be in. You know, we'll we'll have some difficult decisions to make. And we just finished working on our budget, and we actually uh, had to zero out our anticipated revenue in 2021 from the hotel tax. Just zero out. We zeroed it out. We went from $800,000 in 2020, uh, fiscal year 20, 2019, 2020, and then 2020, 2021, we zeroed it out. And you know, you can work the spreadsheets any way you want, but zero is zero. Zero is zero. And zero, you can never add that onto anything. And you know, you say to yourself, okay, well, what had to give? Well, what gave is a lot of the programs that we've run for our residents. Uh, ice cream Fridays for the kids, the Rybrook birthday party every June, um, our drive-in movie night. We we basically cut all of the programs for the village, things like that. We've put a freeze on our hiring. We had several uh, roles open, and we had to freeze that. And you know, through the through the great work of our village administrator and our village treasurer, we have been able to do it. Still stay under the budget, uh, the the tax cap, the New York State tax cap, and um, it's going to be very painful this year. We will not be able to offer as many services as we would have liked to have provided, as we would typically provide. John, as the year goes on, can you readjust that budget? Or absolutely, you, you can. Okay, you're not in a spot absolutely. where this is it until next year. No, unless we have revenue. If we have revenue that's unanticipated, if someone wants to sponsor an ice cream Friday, we can certainly, you know, we'll do it. It's actually not a very expensive thing to run. It's really more uh, the, the the main overhead is is the uh, personnel costs. But um, you know, when you start thinking about the Robert birthday party, big big events that that we typically would have, we couldn't uh, just con you know, in all good conscience. Steep, keep running, keep those things in, in and uh, it, it's just not possible. And we certainly didn't want to have to lay anybody off. Westchester Talk Radio, we thank you for joining us. I'm John Marino, and we are the Cup of Political Joe show here at Westchester Talk Radio, joined by the mayor of the village of Rye Brook, Paul Rosenberg. We are brought to you by some of our friends around the area, like. Well, first of all, let's say thank you to the people on the front lines at White Plains Hospital and all the healthcare facilities around our tri-state area and especially here in Westchester. White Plains Hospital helps bring Westchester Talk Radio to us and at White Plains Hospital, we produce for them here at Shark Creative, our parent company, their podcast series. It's called Health Talk and you can find it places like the White Plains Hospital website, also on the Westchester Talk Radio dot com location on the internet as well just google westchester talk radio dot com google that up or whatever your search engine is go look for us and you can find the show from white plains a hospital called health talk find it also on demand on the westchester talk radio podcast page too also high power westchester at high power they are always looking for the right financial solution for you they promise you they will find it they'll work together with you for 
what is best for you and your portfolio. Look for their podcast series on demand at teams.hightoweradvisors.com forward slash team forward slash Westchester forward slash media room, Hightower Westchester, your wealth managed to a fiduciary standard. And our good friends also in Mount Vernon at Wartburg, Wartburg Healthcare and Rehabilitation in Mount Vernon. We thank you one and all for bringing Westchester Talk Radio to us here and helping us do what we do. The mayor of the village of Rybrook, Paul Rosenberg, if you had the opportunity to go to Albany, sit down with Governor Cuomo, sit down and make your case to the state legislature, the state Senate and the assembly. Also sitting down with the Westchester County board, looking for some kind of assistance there. What would your pitch be that we in villages around Westchester, even those with the rep of being a bit more affluent and swanky, a bit more wide open where you think maybe COVID-19 can't hit as hard because Rye Brook is a bit more wide open. And that's a misnomer because it does hit places like Rye Brook. What would you say? You know, John, it's a great question, but I don't think I could say to anything to the governor that he doesn't know. I watch his uh, news conferences every day. That's one of the benefits of actually working from home every day. Uh, when that his news conference comes on every day between 11 and 12, it gives me the opportunity to watch it. He gets it. And he understands that without funding for state and local governments, we have a hard, uh, to repay us for all of the money that we are spending during this crisis. You know, we're the ones that provide the police. We're the ones that provide the fire and the EMS workers. We're the ones that provide the sanitation pickups two or three times, you know, a week. But, you know, you've got your, your regular sanitation. You've got your bulk. You've got your recycling. All of that costs a lot of money. We're the ones that provide the leaf pickup in the fall when we plow the snow. The governor gets it. He absolutely gets it. And I'm, I talked to our uh, assemblyman, Steve Otis, and our state senator, Shelley Meyer. They get it. They are so helpful. They understand. The problem is, um, and, and Nancy Barr, our, our legislator in the Westchester County government, she gets it, and George Latimer, they get it. We are on a local level and even the state level, we are all aligned. And I've never seen it like that where all of the interests of the, of the municipal, state, local governments, county governments, they're all, we are all in the same boat and we all are trying to work together to the best that we can. Everybody's on the same page. We are all on the same yeah. page. It's just getting that money from the, the, um, United States uh, federal government. Yeah, if you went to D.C. and sat down in front of Congress, you would have to say, look, our villages, our localities, not only in the state of New York and Westchester County, but around the country, everything crumbles. So we're not asking, we're not begging for a handout. We're talking reality here right now. And this is what needs to be done today. We are. And this is a problem. You know, if you dial 911, uh, you you're hoping and praying and assuming that that ambulance police officer fire truck is going to show up. And, you know, we're doing our best to, to, to be good fiduciaries and balance the budget and make sure that that does show up. But this uh, COVID-19, this is, this has had a devastating effect, not just on local businesses, which, you know, I hope and pray that the local businesses in Rybrook, uh, we don't have a lot of them, but we do have, uh, a fair amount that they're able to reopen when this is all over. And, uh, you know, we, we really, really want to make sure that because if they don't open, then there's more people out of work and we don't want to see that. We, you know, it, it's all in a cycle. Everything is interconnected from, from the very top where the money is coming from and the way it works its way down through the, through the, uh, economy. And it, everybody re here really has to understand that uh, we are very, very dependent on state and county government doing what they need to do to represent us. You need that local tax money. People complain, well, my taxes are too high. I try to explain to them, I think, as a mayor, you would kind of reiterate this, without taxes, we have nothing. That's right. Whatever you pay tax-wise, it's coming back to you in some way, shape, or form, and chances are one day, You'll say, gee, I'm glad I paid all those taxes because I need this now and they were there for me. You don't want to ever have to use uh, 911 and, and wait for an ambulance. But you know what? The day that you need it, 
you need it and you need it to be working and you need not to be worried that instead of uh, two ambulances during any given shift that there's only one out and unfortunately maybe it's already transporting somebody to Westchester Medical Center. That's the last thing you want to hear when, when you need a, 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 an emergency service. The mayor of the village of Rybrook, Paul Rosenberg, on a lighter note, Mayor, you have a pretty prominent young man in town who's a very hot baseball prospect with the draft coming up pretty soon in June. He's a young man who was ranked 35th out of draft eligible players this year, high school and college, big star at the Brunswick School across the border in Greenwich, across the Connecticut mm -hmm. border, which you live right here, right? You're right by the Connecticut. Very close. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. Rybrook, uh -huh. it's uh, stone's you could, throw. You could, like, stick your arm out the window pretty much where you are and be in Greenwich. A couple your hundred body yards. body inside in Rybrook yeah. and your arm almost in Greenwich there, pretty mm -hmm. much, right? And this young man, his name is Aaron Sabato, played at the Brunswick School, big star, big, huge first baseman, size-wise almost the same as the Mets' Pete Alonzo, and he's got a really big body. He's got that Alonzo kind of a build, great power at the plate, excellent first baseman, and things are looking up for him. Just a few days ago, there was a feature story on him in the New York Post sports mm -hmm. section, and if anyone didn't know much about the village of Rybrook before this article, you got a nice rundown of what it was like to be in Rybrook, to be in the village, to be at home. His father had the capabilities of building an indoor batting cage. Actually, yep. it's an outdoor cage, outdoor. but the way it's set up, it kind of looks yep. like it's indoors. Yep. If you look at the pictures, it's kind of protected from rain and the elements, etc. What a great job his father did. And Aaron he Zabato did. will bring glory to the village of Rybrook real soon. He's already done that, actually. We're very excited for Aaron. So um, what you may not realize is that Aaron's grandfather used to be our police chief. So oh. yes, yeah. So um, we, I know the Sabato family very well. Um, he's they're such a wonderful family, a nice family, you know, and this is a kid who really has talent. Um, and he is going to really, hopefully, knock on wood, go in in the early rounds in the draft and and you know make his family proud make us here in Westchester and Rybrook proud as a parent watching your children grow up and you you watch them in little league and you watch them maybe in travel baseball and you know you always say to some of the other parents who maybe get a little bit overexcited listen nobody from Rybrook is ever going to the major league nobody in Rybrook is playing in the NBA don't worry about it but here you have a kid who actually broke that mold and is actually, he's playing at University, I believe University, University of North Carolina right now. As you mentioned, went from the Brunswick School to University of North Carolina. Now he's going to go in the draft. It's, it's a real Cinderella story, story, and it couldn't happen to a nicer uh, family. They are just absolute uh, great family pillars of the community. As I mentioned, his grandfather was a police chief, um, father very well known in the community, local businessman, and we couldn't be happier for them. You bring up some good points about parents and the role they play. When I was a kid, I was originally a left fielder. And mid-season, guys on the team weren't happy with the coach. So they booted him out and they brought my father in as the mm -hmm. coach. His first move was to John, you don't really track those fly balls the way an outfielder should. You're the second baseman now. I know, okay. <laughs> and then... When I told him, uh, you know, I'm going to try it for the high school basketball team, and a couple of his, he grew up with a couple of guys in Manhattan who wound up playing in the NBA, actually. And he said, you know, John, a couple of my friends played in the NBA. You're not going to play in the NBA. So basketball yeah. is one thing. Don't ever let it get in the way of school. He said, that's my rule, and that's what we had to abide by. But Aaron Sabato, a different story. He different has the story. entire world in front of him. He's got the world in his hands. And I don't think he's going to be picked any later in this because of the pandemic. Only a five-round baseball draft Correct. this year That's what I'm reading, yeah. will be picked, I'm sure, I'm pretty sure within the first two rounds. It would be a shock if he lasted anywhere past round two. I believe he grew up a Yankees fan, too. Yep. I hope he understands that you may not, at least right away, get to play for the team of your dreams. But it would be great if the Mets or Yankees were able to draft Aaron Sabato and have him here after moving through their minor league systems, which for the Yankees could be on Staten Island for the Mets out in Brooklyn. Yep. Get him at home. I like, love to see local players wind up we would playing love that. for 
their home teams, especially the home teams that they have rooted for growing up. Like this kid, the Yankees drafted last year from school out in the Northwest of New Jersey, kid uh, Volpe, the uh, shortstop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, he went to the Del Barton school in uh, the Morristown area and he grew up a Yankees fan, 18 years old. There he is in the Yankees system. One of the first preseason games this year before everything got canceled, they said, hey, come over to the minor league complex, sit in the dugout during the game. Later in the game, uh, you feel like taking a swing, want to grab a bat? At the age of 18, I, I got up and batted for the Yankees a year after I got out of high school. Who could beat that? Could Would you imagine? Been. I can't even imagine that. Yeah. 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 So what a very thrill. exciting. Great to have you with us, the mayor of the village, Roy Brook, Paul Rosenberg here on Westchester Talk Radio, Cup of Political Joe. And Mayor, let's do this again soon. And I know you're doing all you can in Rye Brook during this pandemic. And we thank you for all you have done and all we know. Thank you, you John. Brooklyn. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thanks for your time. Thank you for your time, most importantly. Mayor Paul Rosenberg, the mayor of the village of Rye Brook here. Cup of Political Joe, Westchester Talk Radio. I'm John Marino, and we are produced by Shark and Creative, brought to you by N2G, the Indian Point Energy Center in Buchanan, where they promise to keep the lights on right throughout this pandemic and throughout April of 2021. They promise to keep us powered here around Westchester with Polis Electric in Pelham, Westchester, and Duchess in Pauling, and in Manhattan at the Polis, well, you're never in the dark with them. Also, we also thank our heroes over at the White Plains Hospital Center, all the people on the front lines there and the front lines throughout Westchester, the healthcare facilities, the hospitals throughout our tri-state area and the state of New York and New Jersey and Connecticut and White Plains Hospital. They put their lives on the line to keep us safe during the COVID-19 pandemic. Also, Hightower Westchester, managing your wealth up to a fiduciary standard. And our friends over at Parker Sterling Realty plus Wartburg Healthcare and Rehabilitation in Mount Vernon, Wartburg. Healthcare and Rehabilitation. They are in Mount Vernon in Westchester and also their place right down the block from where my girlfriend lives. Got to say this too, in Forest Hills, Queens. I walk by it all the time there in Forest Hills. Westchester Talk Radio produced by Shark Creative. I'm John Marino. WestchesterTalkRadio.com, all one word. WestchesterTalkRadio.com. Again, produced by Shark, that's S-H-A-R-C, not with a K, with a C, produced by Shark, that is S-H-A-R-C, creative, here at Westchester Talk Radio. Thank you.